Oh, are we on? Are we on? Are we here? Yes, this I think so we're exciting. here. I know. I'm oh my so gosh, excited. look at you all. We're here. Welcome for Wednesday Night, Night Live. Live. It we is so good to see that so much better. Yeah, we, boy, we blew that entrance. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, it's great yeah. to see all of you. Welcome. We're so glad. Week number three of this yeah. thing. Can you believe it? No. We're halfway through Lent. This yeah. is exciting. Easter is like getting closer and closer. And this is yeah. uh, this is exciting stuff. Where we're glad that you are joining us for another night where we are cooking together, we're talking theology together, yes. and we're reminding one another of what the cornerstones of our families and more importantly our faith is all about. And so we are just thrilled that you're enjoying this Lent experience with us. Yes, and so before we get started to video number one, I wanted to remind you about a few things. First of all, you're going to need a bowl right away to make the puddings. We're going to start with dessert first, a whisk yes. and a measure cup and then you're we are going to be doing a breading station tonight so make sure you have those uh, breading bowls ready and then if you have parmesan cheese I didn't put it in your bag um, but you may want to add that into your breading station as well and last but not least we want you to preset your oven now to 375 and while you're doing all of that, at the end of our time together tonight, we're going to once again play a rousing game of Kahoot, and we want to make sure that you are ready to go with this. And so you're probably watching this on your like laptop or a computer or something like that. We just need you to grab another device, and uh, whether it's a phone or a tablet, and you're going to go to Kahoot.it. That's K A. H O O T dot I T, or you can, if you're on your phone, download the Kahoot app and just have that queued up and ready to go. So when we get to the point of playing the game in a little bit, you'll just need to put in the pin, put in your name, and you'll be off and running to be able to play the game with us live. And so, so make sure you have that prepped and ready to go. So you, we're starting with dessert tonight. Yeah, we're starting with dessert. I love this. Me too. All right. So with that, let's check it out. Okay, are you ready? This is week three already. I can't believe it. I cannot it. believe okay. it. So let's wash our hands and get ready. Okay. I'll go first. Yeah. Good, 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 good. You're washing your hands at home too, right? Yeah. How hot do you make the water? I, I like a I like a uh, a medium temperature because yeah. I don't want to like peel the skin off of my hand. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I don't want my hand freezing call. by the end of it either. Yeah. Okay. Know? I get it. Totally. You know what? We are going to actually start <laughs> with dessert first. You know how you were talking last week about like not having dinner? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have dessert. Didn't take first. too well through yeah. the week. But. No, I know, right? Okay. So you need a bowl. We're going to make pudding pies. And these are another one of those things that taste really special. They feel really special, but they're super, super easy. Have you ever made instant pudding before? Uh, no. No. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to... I tried it once, but it took me a long time. Nice. So I gave up. Yeah. Okay. Well, that clearly you're not an experienced cook then. This I see what true. you're saying. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to make the instant vanilla pudding to the package directions. And I have chosen vanilla because everything is chocolate. You know, you gotta have a little vanilla in your life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mix it up. All right. And in this case, we are going to make the vanilla pie instructions because that basically is a little thicker than if you're just making the regular jello pudding, right? Okay. All right, so you pour that in there. I'm gonna get the milk out. <clears throat> and Here's another uh, fun fact to know. If you're using lactose-free milk, it won't work, and neither will like almond milk or soy milk. So if you're making this pudding, instant pudding mix, you have to actually use real milk. Real milk. Yeah, so I can't read it. I need my glasses. Can you read the pie instruction? It says, um, two cups. wait, the, the pie? Yeah, two cups cold milk, three cups. Can't wait a minute, am I reading the, the, the yeah. pudding pop directions? Mm -hmm. The so, no, uh, no, the pie, okay, I felt like they were right there. Where's the pie <laughs> instructions? I don't know. Uh, okay, I didn't think this was going to hold me up. You know what, I think it, I think we add the milk yeah. to the... Well, we do, but I'm wanting two, I think it's two cups, but it might be three cups. It's not on here! 
You know, Julie, a wise person once told me, yeah. you just go with your gut yeah. and you fill in however sweet. much you can. Yeah. Okay, it says, um, first thing we gotta do is scan here or call 1-800-431. No! Can you just read no. the back? I can't see it, my glasses are now. Okay, okay, it says, <laughs> Three cups of cold okay, milk. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> and like I said, liquid mesh is awesome because you can see. And this is only two cups, so you want to pour that in? I'd love okay, to. Okay, good. Now, give me that. And then Ooh, we look need at the color. We need one more cup of milk. Then we're gonna stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Okay, good. Nice. All right. Get your spoon. Stir it up. Doesn't matter what kind of spoon. Well, I think a whisk, but if you don't have a whisk, a spoon works. <laughs> okay. What do you have? This this will work, right? Oh yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Okay, so I have to tell you a funny story while you're stirring that up. And what's funny about pudding is you actually have to stir it for a few minutes, and then it starts to thicken up. So while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I actually make these with little mini graham cracker crumb pie crusts. They're in the baking aisle. That is really the best way to have these. But I could not find them. They're nowhere to be found. So I'm thinking, great, here I have this great recipe idea, and they don't have the ingredients that I need. But you can buy these pre-made phyllo shells in the frozen section of the store. And actually, this is fun, too, because these are really mini pies. I mean, they're, they're so mini that you can just make a little pudding pie and pop it in your mouth. Wow. And you know how you wanted to start with dessert? Well, guess what? Wow. We are, see, these are so cool. You know what you could put in here? Like little cherry pie filling or some of your apple pie filling that you had in there. If you have a lot of those, you have many minis. Many minis. That's right. We do, we have I'm many lame. minis. Right, okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm used to lame. <laughs> All right, so, okay, is it thickening They're up? Breaking. No, that's good. Is it thickening okay. up? Yeah. Kind of, but. Yeah, so um, it, I think it's looking good, right? Is this, this so, is, because it still feels liquidy, but I mean, is it supposed to get as Yeah, like, it will get thick as you, because this is part of why we're making it first, is that you put the pudding in, and then you put it in the fridge while you're eating dinner, and it'll thicken up and set. So we're okay. gonna do that. You, you probably wanna take uh, one of these spoons, and it's you're going to fill one. each one of those, right? Okay. Do I just leave them in the tray? Yeah, just leave them in the tray, which is nice about that, right? So you just put pudding in, right? And then you're going to put them in the fridge, and when they're done in the fridge, they're going to be nice and firm, and you're going to put whipped cream on the top. And then you're going to eat them. What? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in just a minute. Let mm -hmm. me finish uh, doing mm -hmm. this. Um, hopefully there'll be some left for <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> this is crazy how it's thickened <laughs> up. I... <laughs> there, you can have one. It's so good. Wow. Um, but <clears throat> they can sit in your roof fridge mm. until it's time for dinner. Are they good? Mm. They're like super easy. And it's fun. It, it feels special, right? Oh, my God. It feels like you've done something that's extra. And it's super easy. That was really good. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, I don't trust you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. You don't need the shells. Okay. That's, that's true. all you need is right that's here. That's right. <laughs> okay. So we're going to come back. We're going to make the main part of this meal, which is really going to be easy and delicious. Oh my God. Give me that. <laughs> Oh my Ooh, gosh, yeah. I thought that was so fun. And I love these things. They are like the zippers. They are so, oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so good. Mm. Even Gabe is liking them. Mm, Look at Gabe back there in the back eating them. <laughs> Go Gabe.
They are tasty. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, mm. oh my God, you should be right now finishing these up and getting them ready to put in the refrigerator. And there's no need to do anything else at this. Will you settle down with that? I can't that? get the, how do you get the whipped cream out? Well, you there have to, go. the angle. There we go. Yeah, all right, so anyway, mm. um, we, we are into this next segment and really there's really not a lot going on for you in the kitchen. We will be doing the breading station next if you wanna get that preset. But be, until that happens, we are going to, the questions that we get from the congregation from the sermon this past weekend. So if you have a question, uh, how do you let us know that you want us to share about it on Wednesday? So if you do have a question on Sunday morning or whatever, you can email Julie and I or uh, text us or uh, just come up to us after worship mm -hmm. and uh, ask us, which has happened a few mm -hmm. times. And so uh, definitely keep those questions coming in because they've been great. And yep. it just keeps the dialogue going so we can talk further about it on Tuesday, on Wednesday nights. And this past week, this there was a really great question. Because you mentioned in the sermon about Christ being the second Adam. And I think a lot of people would like to hear a little bit more about that. You know, why is that analogy being made? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, that was a poorly timed I'm sorry. pudding cake. Um, you're right. Uh, I remember at our traditional service mentioning this, you know, second Adam, calling Jesus the second Adam. And uh, one person had this look of like, Terror on their face, and yep. I realized, oh man, uh oh, this is I'm in trouble here. You don't hear it a lot, but it doesn't just come out of thin air. When I was in seminary, you know, we heard from my uh, Romans professor, uh, um, Jim Miller, last week, and uh, he he was talking all about Second Adam. I mean, it's out of Paul, right? Yeah. The theologian Charles Spurgeon mm -hmm. directly calls uh, Jesus Second Adam, and we apply mm -hmm. all these different titles to him. To, to Jesus, and, and this is this is one. And so even Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, he writes, uh, the first man, Adam, became a living being. Mm -hmm. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Jesus, yeah. right? Calling Jesus a second Adam. And when you think about it, this is what I just love about this concept of the second Adam. This is a logical formula. <laughs> if we need logic in our religion, we find it right here. Yeah. So Adam is the one who is responsible for bringing sin into the world, mm -hmm. right? And so if we could have fixed that sin ourselves, we would have done it by now. So logic states that we need <clears throat> some someone else, something outside of typical human nature to fix what Adam broke. So you, we need a second Adam to kind of reinitiate life. And so um, Paul, in what we read on Sunday, does this whole comparison contrasting thing between Adam and Christ. Can we do a little bit of that yeah. right now? Yeah, let's do it. So, so um, Adam's actions impacts all of humanity, right? Mm -hmm. And so then when we think about it, Christ's actions also impact all of humanity. Yeah. Adam serves as this symbol for humanity. Christ serves as this uh, um, uh, embodiment of God in the flesh for all of humanity. Both of them enter into the world sinless, but Adam fails. <laughs> Christ triumphs over sin. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam represents our human nature, if you will. Christ, what Jesus does is impart a spiritual nature into us that supersedes the human nature. Mm -hmm. Adam commits this one sin that dooms all of humanity. And then what we see in Christ is one death that then redeems and saves all of humanity. Humanity. Yeah. And so there absolutely is this thing to seeing Christ as the, you know, the second Adam, the one who undoes and fixes what the first one put into motion. Yeah, you know what I love about this is that um, one of the things that we do as faithful Christians is measure scripture against other pieces of scripture. And that's what helps val val validify. 
Valid validate. Validate. I couldn't think of the word. Helps with validate what you're saying. And there are other passages in the Bible that do make that very same comparison. So yeah, yeah. And I just want to cool. real quick, if I've got a second here, yeah. I just want to read the closing of what we read on Sunday. So just yeah. in light of what we just talked about, just hear this then. So Paul brings all that together by saying, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all. Who was that, everybody? That's Adam, right? right? Uh, so one man's act of righteousness leads to life for all. Who is that? Christ. Or Christ. Yep. Yeah. And so, so that, that comparison thing, I mean, it absolutely plays out in Scripture, yeah, if you ask me. It. And so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get back to breading the chicken. So get your breading station ready. Uh, like I said, I did not put Parmesan cheese in your bag. But if you have some, you may want to add that into the breadcrumbs. And uh, yeah, so let's get to breading our chicken. That was really good. And you know what? They didn't, you, we didn't use up all the pudding, so I just put it in a mug, and that's also good. Putting in a mug is really good, wouldn't yeah, you think? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially okay, so, with whipped cream. Especially, especially with whipped cream. Okay, so we're going to do the next part of the meal. This is going to be pretty fast and easy, but we're going to do another breading station like we did last week with the zucchini. Do you remember how we did that? Um, refresh my memory. Okay, so you need three pans, and you're going to put um, the egg and the milk in one. You're going to put flour in one, and you're going to put the breadcrumbs in one. Was the flour was before, does that matter? Flour's first, yeah. Flour's first. <clears throat> flour, the, the liquid, and the bread. Now, okay. we're making chicken fingers, and a lot of people like to marinate their chicken fingers in buttermilk, and the reason for that is because it's sour, and it actually tenderizes the meat. But <clears throat> if you don't have a lot of time, you know, it doesn't really not make the menu taste good, but if you are somebody who knows how to do that, I'd say go ahead, do it before you go to work and let it soak. Oh, cool. but in the meantime, we, we, we're not doing that. So we're starting out with regular chicken. We're gonna do the flour, the milk and the egg, and then the bread crumbs. So let's get to work on that. Okay. Do you have the flour? Yeah, it's right there behind you. Yep, perfect. And how much flour goes in? Two cups of flour, and we're going to fill the bottom of this. I think kids love chicken fingers, and they're actually really easy to make. Um, a lot of people don't realize how simple they are, but you can make a really delicious meal that everybody's happy with. Two cups of flour. Yeah. And then, nice. And then you can put the milk in. Milk goes, how much milk do we need? Um, you can do uh, two cups or a cup. You can do a cup. I have to see the bottom. This depends. It really all depends on how much chicken you're making. Why is it? That's fine. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. It all ends up in the same place. It all ends up in the same place. So. Two cups of milk, you said? Uh, or you wanna... Yeah, you could do two cups. Yeah. Perfect. And then put the egg. In here. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, are, are, no! I, I thought that's what You're the. You're supposed to. Okay. I, yeah. long day. All right, here we go. I actually am better at this than you. <laughs> you are, there's no doubt. Yeah. So, okay, mix it up. And I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese in here. This isn't really in the recipe, but it does add flavor and I'm going to put it in there. So if you have some at home, you can um, mix it in there. <clears throat> and then we're going to put some oregano seasoning. Ooh. Ah. These are going to be kind of like an Italian flavored chicken breast. Okay. And then paprika. And we got to get salt. 
Notice how I'm not measuring, and what I was saying last week was this isn't necessarily about the measurement, it's more about seasoning and flavor. Um, but if you're somebody that really needs to measure, I'd say about two teaspoons of each, up to a tablespoon, depending on your taste. And most important is the salt. So say a lot of salt. No, it's not. There you go. Okay. See, because people under season their meat, if if you can believe it, because they're afraid that it's gonna be too salty. So, you know, don't get carried away, but don't be shy with it either. Okay, so do you remember? You just oh yeah, I'll do this now. Yeah, so it's the chicken, mm -hmm. the milk. Yeah. The breadcrumbs. Yes. Where are we putting the chicken? I have a pan we... that's right okay. behind you, actually. Oh, okay. It's all ready to go. Into the flour. Yep. Then we put it into this milky egg substance. Yep. And then into the panko breadcrumbs. So this. Why do you use panko breadcrumbs? I think they're crispier. You could use. Hold, hold on a second. We're going to do a double dip. Oh, so okay. So you're going to go then. back to the flour. This is just going to put an extra layer of breading on it. But I use panko because they make the item crispier. But you could use um, regular Italian seasoning. See how crispy that is? It does look yeah, good. Yeah, see, right? Some people even go for a third round. But Really? Yeah, I think two's good here. Now remember, um, you were saying how you like using your hands. Mm -hmm. Look how gooey your hands are getting. I know, That's super it's so fun, much right? fun. Some people don't like that, but I think it's part of what makes cooking fun. Get kind of get messy. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is great. Yeah. So how long have uh, how long have you um, had a passion for cooking, Julie? Mm -hmm. I, I would say it's in my family. My mom loved cooking and. I just, I've never been afraid of it, and I, you know, you just kind of experiment, and I like to eat food, too, so I think that's part of it. I want to make something good, and... What does a well-cooked meal mean to you? Hmm. I, I, I'm not what I would call a gourmet cook, which means I spend a lot of time fussing over something. My idea of a really good meal is something that everybody enjoys eating, and wants to come and sit down together and enjoy and then mm -hmm. having conversation. It's really about the conversation, isn't yeah. it? It's about the people. For me, yeah. There. Especially. And I I am intentional about setting the table. I mean I don't think you have time to do it all of the time, but I think it invites people to come and sit down and relax. Mm -hmm. And it shows that you care if you take a time the time. Do you use paper plates? Uh I do. Yeah. I know a lot of people that use paper plates, but I usually always use glass plates. Really? Yeah. And part of it is because I think, well, I have glass plates. I'm, I'm just going to keep glass plates in my cupboard right. and not use them. But I feel guilty, uh, yeah, using paper plates. You do? I do, because oh. it's kind of silly, right? Yeah. But man, just sometimes life is just moving too fast and I don't have time <laughs> to do that whole washing well, and plate I, thing. Well, I think that that's important because I think the bottom line, though, is that you sit down together. I think, right. to me, the most important thing is having conversation and sitting down with each other. So if you need to use paper plates, use paper plates. If it saves you time in washing dishes later, it doesn't matter. Julie. What? Thank you for absolving me of my paper you're, plate You're guilt. welcome. I appreciate okay. that. Okay. I'm going to ask you later if you feel guilty. Not but, anymore. No, you don't. I once that? did. But not anymore. Just let it go. Let it go. That you've done these look really good. I've been having fun. Yeah, they Can look really I good. Can I just do like a a triple deal on this one yeah. just to see yeah, what yeah, happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to do this quickly because okay. this is gonna be my favorite one. I can tell. Yeah. Oh, we're going for three. Triple dipper. Okay. Okay, this is absolutely a mess. Yep, it is. But, but it's going to oh be gosh. super good. It's going to be super good. Okay. It looks good. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fry them up. And we're going to do the same thing we did last week uh, with the zucchini in that we just brown them on the uh, outside. And then we're going to pop them in the oven to finish them up. And that way they don't get burned and they're nice and juicy in the center. So we will 
get going on that and we will be back. <laughs> Good job. So, I, needed, were, I needed to go great. for that triple one. You did. <laughs> I, and it's, I can't wait to see how it turns out. I know. Yeah. Oh, you know how it turns out. I do know how it turns <laughs> but out. But we don't want to go there nope, quite yet. No, not yet. yet. Um, so, so, okay, so you might be still continuing of bread, you know, breading your chicken right now, mm -hmm. but um, if you're kind of close to being done with that, go ahead and uh, clean up your breading station, kind of get that stuff out of the way. Yeah. And then what we're going to be moving into right as we get started is, is uh, preheating your oil, right? And so you're going to want to get that started as soon as you can so that we make sure right. that the, the oil is hot yes. enough for when we're going to So what you're it. saying is start your oil heating up now. The trick with oil is that once it gets heated, it's time to go. And we don't want it to get too hot before you actually start cooking in it. Um, the trick, though, will be um, when we're done, your oil might not be hot hot enough, but I will give you a trick right before we get back in okay. to tell you how to test if it's ready. Awesome. So while you're getting all that stuff done, maybe you have somebody that gets out the, the broccoli and the different seasonings that we're going to put in the broccoli. Uh, we're also going to be cooking up some rice here in a, a few minutes. So maybe get that box of rice ready in a bowl to put the rice in. And so uh, so there's a few things we just want you to kind of have prepped and ready. You don't need to get them out, out, but right. just have them kind of at the ready to, you, to be able to grab yeah. when we get to it. So we are at the section of our next question from the congregation. I really like this one because I resonate with it actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is how come it is so hard for us to talk about sin? Yeah, that's a that man that that's a tough question to answer in three minutes. Nice, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's interesting, yeah, because I mean, there's so much that that goes into that, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, and we're talking about what I would call little s sins, right. right? Not the big s sin, which is the condition we live under, thanks okay. to Adam. That makes sense. But but the 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 byproduct of that, which are all of those crazy things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and those sins, I mean, there's embarrassment attached to it. There's there's shame, right? Yeah. Um, there's guilt, but but also there's things like hey we kind of like some doing some of those okay. things or there's the the feeling of hey I, i'm not going to stop doing that if yeah. we're being honest oh my gosh even even the lord's prayer our our distancing from sin plays out the Lord's Prayer is mentioned in Scripture twice, in Matthew and in Luke. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and in Luke's version, Luke actually has Jesus saying the word sin. Mm -hmm. But we conveniently have changed that in our Lord's Prayer. We say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We won't even say the word sin mm -hmm. in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. But I think the most concerning thing about our distancing from sin is this idea of accepted assumption. And what I mean by that is that we have all kind of at this point collectively accepted the fact that, yeah, we sin. Okay. Moving on with life, yep. right? Let's go have some more pudding pie. Right. And, and we just kind of are like okay with it. Uh, and so really what's concerning is a, a lack of interest in engaging in a conversation about holy living. So uh, generations ago, probably in like the 20s or the 30s, if you really look at it, it's interesting because at that time uh, there was emphasis on sinful living equaled unholiness. Mm -hmm. So there was a legalistic tone to religion at that time. And you think about it, you know, with the emergence of rock and roll and public dancing that was a little different and all of these kinds of things, uh, people pointed to these actions as sinful actions. And so there was this uh, sense of like, hey, if you do good, God will be happy with you. Yeah. But then you get into the 60s, right? And this shift in we see in, in our faith where, where there's an, an emphasis on this idea of free living, of, of, of a freedom from sin, of God's grace being available to everyone, that anything goes because God loves us. And so... What that amounted to is this idea of what we would call cheap grace, grace that doesn't really carry a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And so really what, what I think we're, we're equally as hesitant to talk about when we, when we don't want to talk about sin, we also don't want to talk about this word holiness. Mm -hmm. And we see it in Leviticus. Leviticus 19 verse 2 says uh, that God is saying to us, you must be holy because I am holy. You can be holy because I am holy. And holy equals sacred, righteous, 
this word sanctified, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's, it's kind of uneasy to think of us as being uh, in a position to be sacred or righteous or sanctified, right? Yeah. And, and, and definitely to think that we could do something to get to that point seems crazy. So who is it that can help us move forward in moving toward holiness? I feel like this is a um, like Bible school answer. You know, my first response would be Jesus, right? <laughs> right. But uh, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, absolutely. And if we went to chapter eight in Romans, which really uh, dovetails nicely with chapter five, mm-hmm. uh, Paul writes, "If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you." He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to you through the spirit that dwells in you as well. Mm -hmm. And so what Paul is saying is Jesus gives us the spirit, the spirit that lives within us. And that spirit can do things. So if we go all the way back to Adam and Eve, right, like Paul does, if we go back to chapter 1 of Genesis, we're told that we're made in God's image. Yeah. That Adam and Eve are made in God's image. And image doesn't mean that we become those things. It means that we represent someone or something. And so Adam and Eve represent the characteristics of God. They're not to be God, yeah. but they're to represent who God is in their life. Mm. But what do they do? Through their actions, they try to be God. And so what the Holy Spirit does within us is not make us Christ, but the Holy Spirit works within us to empower us to overcome those mm. sinful tendencies and to be more holy in our living. Mm. So instead of avoiding talking about sin, let's accept that that is there, yeah. but let's also not avoid about talking about trying to live holy, reflecting who Christ is, reflecting the characteristics of God, and tap into the Spirit moving within us, sanctifying us to live like Christ and empowering us in the world to do so. That is good stuff. It, you know, thank you for that. That's uh, that's really good to hear. We don't talk about that much, but uh, speaking of good stuff, we got to get back to the next step, which is frying the chicken. Oh, this like is the I fun said, part. your oil should be heating. And the way to test if it is ready to go is you get just a tiny little drip of water on your finger and standing back a little ways, kind of flick it into the oil. And if your oil is ready, it will sizzle. If it doesn't sizzle that much, it's not quite ready, and you want to wait a few minutes. Don't get anxious because we've already started frying in this. There will be time to finish. Uh, The important thing is that your oil is hot enough before you start to fry. So let us get to the frying. Okay, so we are back, and we are going to start frying the chicken. And of course, you don't want to cook it all the way through. You just want to get it so that it is um, brown on both sides. Hey, do you remember how to tell if the oil is hot? Do you remember what I said? Oh, oops. Yeah. Um, you put the cold chicken in it and see what happens? Well, that would be one way. But you can also take a little bit of water on your finger and flick it in. To, uh, Turn to, it? Yeah. Look how fast that goes, That right? does go really yeah. fast. Your oil is pretty hot. Okay. And you can see the chicken's Where's not the done. Where's the chicken going from here? You can put it back on there. Back on we're going to just bake it. And your oven should be on 375 right now. Um, so we're going to finish cooking it in the oven. That way it's nice and golden, but it's not burned. And it'll brown up a little bit more in the oven when it's cooking. You're doing great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you could also, if you have an air fryer, you can pop them in your air fryer. So there's lots of different ways you can do it, but I don't know if everybody has one of those. So this is definitely one way to do it. Oop. What? Like, this is intense. Yeah, I know. Like, it, yeah. You can um, see it kind of coming up on the side. Too, so you what, is there a secret to know when it's done or when, like, you're supposed to flip I it? I feel like it starts to brown up the side. Like you start to see it browning on the bottom. Okay. That might stay. Like that? Yeah. What do you think? Does it look done? Uh, sure. Yeah. No, I mean, do you feel like it looks crispy? Why not? are the other, the other ones seemed crispier. Well, there was less on it. There was less breading on it on the zucchinis. 
Or you mean those? Those. Like, well, that's because the oil cooled down. Ah, I see. Now this is my ch this is my this, this is, is my your, friend your here, friend, right? Yeah. We did the whole triple breading on yeah. this one, so I want to make sure it is gonna this be one good. gets a lot yeah, of love no and doubt. care okay. and attention. All right. So look on the side; you can see it start to brown up the side, and it's not quite ready yet. Mm -hmm. But you'll start to see the edges turn brown. Come on, little guy. Yeah, there you go. See, he's a. Uh, yeah. Don't you just feel like he's he's got a special nature to him? Yeah. Okay. I'd flip him. What's that? I'd flip him. You'd what? Flip it. L oh. Flip it. Okay. Yep. Nice. Oh, oh that looks so see? good. <laughs> this one is so good. This is gonna be the best one. Totally good. That's gonna be so good. It is. That is what, good. Look at this. Like, I feel like I messed good. it up though. No, you didn't. Those are nicely brown. I, they're all. They're all gonna be good. So I'm noticing that the chicken Sorry. obviously is not cooked through and through. Right. So what are we doing? We're gonna put it in the oven at 375 and bake it for 15 to 20 minutes um, so that it's nice and juicy in it, the middle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if you you, I think people fry and cook their chicken all the way through in the pan. But I've never been good at that. So I just do it this way. I get the brown on the outside and then I pop it in the oven. Uh, and I that see. way it's it's not dry or burned. Okay, that's good. So that's let's take your chicken. Huh? Take your chicken off. Take it, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he's, look, he's, he's okay. He's, he look is, at him. He is, he's looks good. just Yeah, fine. he looks good. Okay, so we're gonna move the oil off the heat and turn the burner off. Okay. That's important because you can set kitchen oil on fire. All right, and we're gonna wait a few minutes here, and we're gonna pop everything in the oven. I think all it at smells once. like it's burning. Yeah, it's not. okay. So now we're gonna do broccoli. Do you like broccoli? What are you doing? <laughs> so we're not putting that in yet. Not yet. We're gonna put it all in together. Okay. This is easy. This to me, if you don't like broccoli, might be a game changer for you. So we're gonna open this up. You can use your knife and scissors. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to cut the broccoli florets oh, off great. the stalk. Do you like broccoli? Uh, yeah. I okay, do. good. Um, should we rinse them off first? No. Or no? Mm -mm. Okay. Do you rinse your broccoli? I feel like oh, okay. you're supposed to. Oh, I don't know. Typically, I do yeah. uh, the, the microwave bags. Oh, okay, yeah. So that you don't. Know. Okay. So you're going to. You're gonna, Cut the florets off. So you got to get the stalk off, and then I usually just break it. Yeah. Wait, cut the stalk off? Well, yeah, I cut, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Go ahead. And so then um, you can see how it's. Oh, yeah. I got you. And so you're going to just break the. So that just kind of makes your job easier when you get the stalk off like that. And then you're going to pop them out of the plate. So. I'm going to do it the proper way this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good job. Okay. And then break the Love broccoli. It. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Breaking broccoli. Yeah. Ooh, this is fun. Have you ever had roasted broccoli before? Ah, uh, yes. Mm, I love roasted so broccoli. So good. Have you ever made it before? Uh, no. Oh. That's I exciting. love roasted broccoli. Yeah. You're going to you're going to make it from now on, I guarantee. You. Um I don't think it works with frozen broccoli. I don't think you can make roasted broccoli with frozen, with frozen broccoli because it's already soggy. You know, frozen broccoli. Right. It's already got a lot of moisture in it. Okay, so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add oil. Now, if you have olive oil, that is your choice. But we just have the regular oil here, which works as well. So we're going to um, put a couple tablespoons of oil on it. And honestly, this is another thing I eyeball, but I would say a couple of teaspoons, right? So you're going to get a little bit on the pan. And then this is all about seasoning, mm. right? So hold out your hand. Okay. And I'm going to put some in your hand. And then you're going to sprinkle it. Don't just dump it. You want to sprinkle it on. So you go. There you go. Yep. Yep. What? Oh, man. Okay. All right, we're going to work with that. All right, so then we also, do you like pepper? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so do you have pepper? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have one of the grinder peppers? Uh, no. Oh, okay. That's too bad. <laughs> so you're going to sprinkle pepper on it. But if you have a grinder thingy, it's more fun, I think. So Makes sense. Now you can coat everything. So just you want to get out. oil on every piece and hopefully salt on every piece, which you probably can do even though it would have been, it would have simplified your job if you had sprinkled it over everything. Sometimes so. we just make things harder on yeah, ourselves, don't we? Yeah, that is true, that is true. For the sake of a That is silly true, that is true. Moment. Okay, did you get everything? I think so. Okay. So this is going to go in the oven with the chicken and we're going to roast it and bake it. That's it? That's it. That, that's all you that's add all to you it? That's all you have to do. I thought that there was something more added to no. broccoli. That's crazy. No, no. Some broccoli right. or whatever. Okay. And so then the other thing that's is, nice. and we're just going to get this in really quick. Um, there's lots of different ways and kinds of rice. But if you're in a hurry and you want something healthy, there's nothing wrong with the minute in a bag rice. And what I love it is that it's just four cups of water with the bag for 10 minutes in your microwave. And then... You pull it out. Wait, hold on yeah. a second. You do the water in, in, with the bag in the mm -hmm. in the bowl. Mm-hmm. Like that. Ten minutes in the microwave. And I then it's done. This. Okay. Alright. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. Alright. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. And right. then then we put these in. Awesome. And. And away we go. Uh, Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. Yum. Okay. All right. We are going to eat good. Okay. So while that's cooking, let's chat. Chat. <laughs> okay. So you should be wrapping up, frying your chicken, getting your broccoli coated with oil and salt and pepper. Hopefully you sprinkle it over everything. Yes. Like I told Don't you. Don't dump it. Sprinkle That's it. That's right. It's a good lesson learned. And you're popping it into 375 degree oven. Uh, the chicken and broccoli should be done about the same time, but you want the broccoli to look a little roasted, a little crusty on the outside. And the chicken should be 165 degrees in the center. If you missed the instructions on the rice because you were busy, um, I did include those directions so you can just look at the microwave directions and make it uh closer to the time you're going to eat yeah, yeah there you go that's great so um i had this great opportunity uh to sit down with cindy wheatley this yeah. week and cindy is our lay leader here at our church yeah. and she but she's so much more than the lay leader right yeah. cindy uh works in the academic collegiate field and uh, she serves on the board of ordained ministry for the united methodist church but she's also just been uh, a phenomenal uh spiritual guide for people here at this church as long as i've known her and uh she's just so full of, of deep, rich theological uh, thoughts and knowledge. And so I was excited to talk with her about Romans chapter 5 because it's such a challenging book, and this chapter specifically is pretty challenging. And so um, Cindy goes really, uh, I think, does a great job of, of kind of taking us from just talking about sin and second Adam, but into, okay, what do we do with the fact then that Christ redeems all that, that uh, Adam kind of set into motion? It's a really great conversation. So let's welcome Cindy this book of Romans, if I'm being honest, it's just, I find it very intimidating. It is such a, a, a heavy book and it's just filled with so much theology and really so much content. And um, I don't know, can you speak at all to why this, this particular letter from Paul feels so different from other letters? So I think it's important that we understand that even though Romans is the first letter we have in, in the New Testament uh, written by Paul, it was actually one of the last letters he wrote. Um, the way I like to look at, uh, at the book of Romans is um, it's the culmination of Paul's theology, his all of his experiences in the mission field, all the conflicts, all the conversations he's had, you know, all of years and years um, kind of all coalesce and come together in, in this one letter. And so there's just, it's dense, right? It feels a little bit more like a theology textbook than a letter to somebody, right? There's something in the Bible called um, the final discourse 
So the final discourse is when somebody knows they're about to die and they're like, this is what you need to know. You know, this, this is what's most important. Um, in the Old Testament, it would be the book of Deuteronomy. So Moses is there, they're on the brink of the promised land. He knows he's not going into the promised land. So this is his last opportunity to really kind of speak to um, the Israelites. And you can just, it's like, this is what you need to remember. <laughs> and he says it over and over, remember this, remember this. There's this sense of urgency, right? You gotta remember this. Same thing with, with Jesus in the book of John, chapters 14 through 17, when this is the last time he's gonna really have a chance to talk to his disciples. And it's the same thing. It's like, this is what you need to remember. This is what's most important. So when you read Paul, you almost hear that breathless, you know, tone of Paul is like, this is what you need to understand. And, and so when you read him, a lot of times it, he'll repeat himself over and over again. And he'll, and his, he'll have these run, long run on sentences. And it's like, you feel the sense of urgency that this is the gospel. This is the key message you need to understand. That's awesome, Cindy. And, and you know, on Sunday we were looking at chapter five and that is considered one of like the, the you know, core components of the book. And so, um, you know, what kind of thoughts do you have on uh, this particular chapter? So Paul spends chapters one through four sort of setting up the argument, right? Um, explaining why, you know, Jesus need to die for our sins and justification and all of that. But um, chapter five starts with the word therefore. So when, whenever you see the word therefore, it means that whatever he's about to say has to do with everything he just said, right? So this is really important. And I think that the, the starting point and where he starts um, really with the with verse 12 um, through the, the rest of the chapter is that he, he compares Jesus and Adam, right? So he's he, he sets up this comparison which is brilliant, you know, from a narrative technique standpoint, right? Because it's it's a perfect parallel of through Adam, sin and death entered the world. And then through Jesus, it was um, conquered. And so the, the idea that Jesus is the second Adam, I would add, he's also the second Moses. So really, what we see if you read the Bible from Genesis all the way through to the end is that Jesus was the fulfillment of everything that God was doing from the very beginning. All that we starting with Adam, right? So at the very moment that Adam and Eve sinned, disobeyed God, from that moment on, God was working on a plan to reconcile himself with, with his creation, right? And Jesus is the fulfillment of that plan. <laughs> That's so very, he, Paul makes that very, very clear. And in fact, Jesus himself in Matthew chapter five says, I did not come to condemn the law, I came to fulfill it. And so we see that in, in Paul in chapter five, he was like, it's, it's so clear that Jesus was the answer. Jesus is the reset button for all of creation, for the covenant. We have a new covenant. You know, God's already at work redeeming his creation, you know, and there's nothing we can do to earn it and there's nothing we can do to screw it up. Because, it, you know, all we can do is choose to believe and have faith and it is there, it is a gift. Grace is a gift that is given to us. And so it couldn't be simpler, right? Just receive the gift through faith and you're part of this amazing thing that's happening that god's doing in the world you know that's the big picture that paul is painting in in the book of romans and and really um chapter five is where he begins painting that picture and the reason i think he goes back all the way back to adam is to make the point that we're all part of it you know it's not just israel and the jews you know, it's humanity, it's all humanity. And he repeats over and over the word all, you know, all have sinned and all are, you know, can be saved through grace. One of the, one of the um, key themes of chapter five is, you know, death versus life, right? So through Adam death, through Christ's life, right? That's kind of what it boils down to. And what's so cool for me about that is um, if you go back to Deuteronomy, 
the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, verses 19 and 20. Um, and remember, this is Moses' final discourse. So this is Moses saying, this is what's important. Remember this. And he, and he puts it so beautifully. He says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Couldn't be simpler. The Lord is your life. And that's exactly what Paul is saying. It's such a brilliant way for us to understand the difference. Death, it is physical death, obviously, but it's also spiritual death because when Adam and Eve ate of the ate of the fruit, the tree of knowledge, they didn't physically die, but they died spiritually because they were separated from God. So we have to think about sin as and death as separation from God. Um, but what Jesus did is came to reconcile. And that's why the word reconciliation is all through the book of Romans. He wants to hammer in that point that Jesus came to reconcile, to give life, right? Jesus said that over and over himself. I came to bring life, right? So if we just think of that word life, I mean, that's really what it all boils down to is we're choosing life. Just choose life, which is choosing God. God is life, right? You know, as I, as I look back at the Garden of Eden and what happened there, you know, it really is about that was the initial separation and the whole rest of the book, the Bible is about God coming back, you know, reconciling and coming back together with his creation. And that's what, that's the work that God has been about and is still, and it's still going on. And so when we get discouraged or we don't see a lot of signs of hope, just read Romans. <laughs> it's like, it's all there, you know, that, you know, it, God's at work even when we don't see it, but we, we can trust it. We can trust that he's at work. So I just think, you know, through all of his words and all of his long sentences and everything, Paul has really boiled it down pretty simply for us, right? Is that we choose God, we choose life. If we choose what is of the world, we choose death, you know, and separation from God. So to me, that's like, wow, that, that really puts it all in perspective, how it, it couldn't be more you know, easier than, than that to me, I think. And that all we have to do is, is accept it through faith. Nice. So we have a little feedback that you guys are running a tiny bit behind, but don't panic. Just continue doing what you're doing and wrapping up frying the chicken. Um, if you didn't get the broccoli going, you're putting some oil and some salt and pepper on them. And then you're making sure that each piece of broccoli is coated with oil and seasoning to the best that you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're popping it in the oven. And the chicken takes about 15 to 20 minutes. You want 165 degree temperature in the center. But they're strips, so they're going to cook relatively quick. And then the broccoli takes 15 to 20 minutes as well in that same degree oven. The rice, the directions are in the bag. Um, and it takes about 10 minutes once you get the four cups of water in there in the microwave. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I just uh, I just love hearing from from uh, the people in the life of the community yeah, outside me too. of it talking about this. Cindy did an awesome job, I think, uh, oh, sharing with absolutely. us some pretty, really heavy, difficult stuff to work through. Definitely. And I love that message of, like, you know, just choose life. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, I also, I don't know about you, but I've been loving hearing from Dr. Stockdale. Uh, me Have too. You, I mean, I love Caden. I don't know if you guys get to know him personally, but he, he's a, he's a cool dude. He really is. He really is. And he's just breaking it down for us at the most straightforward and simple way to walk away from, uh, this, uh, emphasis on chapter five, what we should walk away with. Yes. So maybe we should have, y'all want to hear from Caden? Yes. You want to hear from Caden? Yes. All right. Let's, uh, let's hear from from Dr. Stockdale as he breaks it down for us. Christ redeems our sin, so let's choose life. 
wait, what? You blink, you miss yeah. it. <laughs> so good. Yes. He is fantastic. His life. I think he exactly. summed up exactly what, what Cindy was saying. Absolutely. Let's just say life. Let's use life. Right. Absolutely. So, so, uh, so, okay. So we're, we're wrapping things up here and um, we, uh, we, we hopefully you're, you're, you're getting things into the oven. Hopefully you're kind of at that point of um, doing the rice. Uh, I, I got to be honest with you. I was blown. I had never made, admittedly, rice in a bowl like that. Because yeah. you don't pour the rice into the bowl, right? No. You just leave it. It's rice in a bag. Boil in a bag. Is it just it blows is. me away. I had no idea that you could do that. <laughs> I thought crazy. it was super cool. So hopefully you're at that point. Four cups of water in the bowl. You just leave the bag with the rice in yeah. the bowl. You pop it in the microwave. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah. And then if I can do it, <clears throat> anyone yes. can do it. Yes. Right? You will drain the water once it comes out. Carefully drain it. And then you'll oh. open the bag and dump it in. That might have been where I made my mistake. No. He, no. But hey, let's play some Kahoot. Let's do it. Hey, hopefully you had your, your, your phone or whatever available. Um, you don't even have to go to the web website, you know, I was going through all that stuff. We've got a QR code that's going to show up on the screen, and you can even just point your phone to the QR code, and it'll take you right to um, the, the, the Kahoot website uh, where you'll put in the pin, and then you can see the pin number above the, um, the QR code. So go ahead and pull out your phone, and let's, let's play this game together. This let's one's going to be a uh, tough one tonight. Yes. Okay, so there is a lot to look at. I don't have it. I'm going to put it on the Facebook. And um, yeah, it's 671 5533. Five, five, three. And so we, we should start seeing some names popping up on the thing. We've got the QR code there. The uh, pin has been shared on Facebook. So if, if you've missed that, you can yeah. pop it in there. And then, of course, you want to come up with the name. Who was it, who was it that had the name last week, Julie? It's Frederick. Frederick Pitala. Yeah. And what was his name? It was fancy like play. fancy player or I something think it, like yeah, that. Yeah, fancy player. Yeah. The word on the street was that this was a this was a name that dated back all the way to his Hotmail account. Nice. You know how long that name's been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you hear that news? I feel like that's Oh, I don't know. So a little like birdie awesome. told me about that. What? No way. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. put in your names. Who do we have jumping on here? The Egan family's yeah. here. That's fantastic. Aaron. Aaron's on board. Aaron's running double duty. He's that's helping us out Violet here, and he's there. doing the sound. Who's on there? Violet's Violet here. Violet and Mary. Mary's here. Violet. Fantastic. Boop, boop. All right. Ooh. That's great. Yep. Little B, Brandon, and Hattie. Awesome. All right. Oh, my gosh. Among Us Aiden. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who is the, what, what are they saying among us? Like, uh, uh. I forget what the, anyway, never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we yeah. go. Oh, boy. <laughs> now people are getting creative. <laughs> now now we're going. All right. So is everybody ready to, um, to play this game? Yep. Let's do it. Do we almost have everybody on here? I feel like we yeah. got 15 questions to get yeah. through. And Julie, tell us real quick, what's the prize we're playing for? Uh, well, it depends on who wins. Um, if it's somebody who's won before, I will pick something else. But I've been giving nice kitchen gear. Ooh, I know. Fantastic. Stuff that you might be able to use as you're cooking. You know, kitchen. if I was playing this for a prize, I would hope that that would be a whisk. Because yes, you don't have a whisk. Have I learned that about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. And so you yeah. claim your prize uh, when you pick up your food for the final yeah. week, right? Yep. That's awesome. Well, hey, let, let's get started with this game. Okay. Let's play. Week three. Here we go. Let's Everybody, you're going to pick your answers on your phone. The yeah. questions will be on the screen. So right, here we go. Question number one is, what, what is, is a, a junk, junk drawer? drawer? Oh, my gosh. Why do we have such a question like that? Place a place for something that doesn't have a place. Like out it. in the garage. A drawer with junk food. What don't? Who, what, what don't <laughs> We don't have hate. junk drawers. Oh, we don't have junk drawers. <laughs> I can't read it. I need it my is, glasses. It is really hard. I wonder, that's a great picture of a junk drawer. I would say that looks like half of what I've got, yeah. you know. Ah, oh, a place for something that doesn't have a place. Woo. That is it. Yeah. Good. Man, who that? Jumping yeah. right onto nice. the top of the list, right from the beginning. All right, next. What is the theme of this series? Mmm, I hope somebody gets this right. Easter's East coming. Jesus is our corner store, Jesus our cornerstone. Makes us new. Oh, we need a place for our junk. That's <laughs> that's probably uh, my theme. That's um, <laughs> probably just just saying. But uh, so. that is that. What do you think? Jesus is our cornerstone, maybe or why? Why, Jim? 
Jesus is our cornerstone he gave away is the, the answer. answer. I was just trying to help some people okay, out. I don't nice. know. Okay. Who that keeps the lead though? Yeah, That's exactly. impressive. All right. Oh my gosh. What Who? is the main topic of Romans 5, 12 to 21? Ooh, is it Paul's journey? Righteousness. Or maybe it's sin and grace. Adam and Eve. What's the main topic the of main this? Topic. That's I don't know. The picture kind of helps out. Interesting. Oh, the picture. Sometimes the kids learn that I would put um, clues. Sometimes. I Big see. Time. I see. Yeah. Sin and grace. Good job. Sin and grace. Yee. Who dat is keeping the man? Somebody's right. got to unseat who dat. Yeah. Come on now. How many I mean, times is the word one repeated in this week's Bible passage? I know. We said it on we, Sunday. We did. I know. We said it right out loud. Three. Seven. Once. Eleven. I hmm. I wonder. Yeah. We we we. Uh, well, I said it one time. You did. Just now. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> but we also repeated it a couple of times. 11 is the answer. Only one person Woo! got it right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they were here. Lil B and Heidi take yeah, the lead. Yeah, this is exciting. They, they oh, man. It. Who is God comparing and contrasting to Christ? Is it Paul? Gentiles? Adam. Or David? Hmm. Mm. Who is God comparing and contrasting to Christ? Really, it's who is Paul comparing yeah. and contrasting to Christ? Oh, right. Yeah, that's Think what I meant to it, write right? in there. Okay, so you know what? So that's I guess Paul's not the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam is the answer. That. We didn't catch that, did we? Adam is the answer. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> so what was the theme of this week's children's story, everyone? Jesus takes our sins away. We have evolved. We are sinners. Hmm, the story of Adam. Yeah, we talked and about Eve. all of those things. This is last yeah. week, not tonight, remember kids. Last, last, last week. This past yeah. Sunday, what was the children's story theme? Man, Jesus takes our sins away. Yeah, good work. Let's see how everyone among us Ooh. jumped up. Aaron, come on now. Boop, boop, boop. Come on, spring break. Being gone Nobody for spring break is not an excuse. Right. A multi-select question. Sin is what? That means you can choose more than one answer. Something that separates us from God. Something only bad people do. Hard to explain. Not fair. I know. Couple answers here. You can choose more than one. Uh, man, this is uh, this is gonna be interesting. Oh. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> That's right. Something that separates us from God and, and hard, hard to, to explain. explain. Yep. A lot of people don't talk about it, which is what we were talking Ooh, about today, right? Man, the Egan, Egan. family jumped yes, up. Yes, this is yes. exciting. Adam's original sin places us. In a timeout is what I need to be in. Uh-huh. Closer to God. You absolutely do. Yeah. Outside of the garden. Apart from God. Oof, man. So Adam's original sin Brandon, places us Brandon, you should where? be able to get this one. Lil B, come on now. Get the right B. answer. We talked about it today and last week. Let's see what we got. Oh, apart yeah. from yep. God. Separated from God. Whoop, Let's whoop, see. Oh, uh, yeah. The Egans are holding on to the lead. Nice. We've had three lead changes yep. so far. What, what did, did Dashrath Thank Manji you. do? I should have known. Cried after his wife died. Went down a selfish path. Got angry with God. Why did you leave me this last He one? built a road through the mountain that helped others. This was the closing it. thing we were talking yeah, about at the end good. of the morning, right? I liked it. The picture, too. Was, yeah, uh, super. Oh, man. He chiseled it. I know. It's crazy. Oh, he built a road through the mountain that yeah, helped chiseled others. Chiseled a road. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Chiseled. Right. Exactly. No lead changes. Wow. Nice. Right, here we go. What is this week's dessert? <laughs> it's got to be chocolate cupcakes, right? Strawberry shortcake. Maybe it's uh, chocolate chip cookies. Mini vanilla pudding vibes. With whipped cream. No, I don't think there were correct answers so up there on the good. screen. I love chocolate chip cookies. Gabe, what's the answer? What do you think the answer is all the way back? Cupcakes. He thinks it's cup plus, Gabe thinks please. it's cupcakes. Is Gabe right? Nice. Mi <laughs> mini vanilla pudding pies. <laughs> All right, mm. here we go. 
This week's point is Christ redeems our sin. So we can eat chicken nuggets. Yes. It's got to be the answer. So let's choose life. Uh, let's celebrate. And let's keep on sinning. Why did you leave that one to me? I feel like that was set up. That was not a trick. I don't know. <laughs> Full of tricks. I, uh, I, I kind of like chicken nuggets, though. I do, too. The, yes. Somebody chose chicken nuggets as yeah, an answer, but it was life. let's choose life. I feel like it was Gabe who chose it. Probably so. Yeah. Man, the Egan family's holding whoop, the lead. Whoop. Oh my gosh. Why does Paul compare and contrast Adam and Christ? Why does Paul do this? Because Jesus is the new Adam. Ooh, Adam and Christ are God's children. Adam doesn't like Jesus. And they're opposite of each other. Why does Paul do this? Paul compares and contrasts Adam with Christ, but the question is, why? Yeah, I right? Don't know. Boop, boop, boop. Because they are opposite of each other. Nice. That was a trick question there. Yeah. Because, you know, Jesus was the second Adam after That's all. true. Type your answer. Who do we want to be more like, Adam or Christ? Adam. Not who are we more like, who do we want to be more like? I want to be more like Aaron and Gabe. Me too. I, 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 can I uh, type in I want to be more like Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we want to be more like, Adam or Christ? Doop, 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 doop. I love those jumping triangles. These are these are like legit answers too, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're you really want to be typing in a serious answer. Yeah. We've got we've got a. Yeah, this is not a would you rather. Uh, four good. people got the yeah. answer correct. Yeah. Among Us yeah. is moving up. Nice. What did the little girl in the video do wrong? Oh, yeah. She was too cute to do something wrong, though. She didn't do anything wrong. She took her brother's toy. That's what it was. She spilled her drink. Hmm. That was a video that we played during the sermon. Yeah, she was super cute. She was so cute. I don't feel like she did anything wrong. I mean, if she really just explained it to me in that way, I would have been like, you're right. <laughs> she so spilled right. her drink. That yeah. is correct. That was what she did wrong. Yeah. All right, last question. What did Julie do with the pudding pies during the <laughs> evening? She saved them for dessert. Oh, I did, did because I do everything and right. you didn't share any of sinned. them. And you bought the wrong pie shells, let's be <laughs> honest. You ate them immediately. <laughs> what? She, wait, did we read them all? I yeah, was so yeah we, I, I made it I was through. telling you. I went, I, I went, <laughs> she ate them immediately, but she also did all those other things too. I'm just being serious here. <laughs> All right, what do we, we, we who that comes in at third? Congratulations, yeah. who that? And little B and Heidi, good job. And number one is the, the Egan, Egan family. family. Congratulations! That is so exciting. Oh my Thank gosh, you. you are gonna win awesome. a kitchen utensil. A kitchen utensil. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I love kitchen. That's awesome. Here, right? Yes, yes. Well, right. I hope that you guys, or we hope, that you guys have had a good time tonight. Yeah, you too. might still have stuff cooking. Who knows? You might just be putting your chicken into the oven right now. Who cares? Everybody relax. You're just going to yeah. eat when you're going to yeah, eat, Yeah, we right? want you to enjoy your meal together. No need to stress. 165 degrees in the center for your chicken. And when your broccoli is done, it'll be kind of a little roasted and Kind of like uh, roasted so marshmallow. You know how they get a little yeah, brown Yeah, they're on the so top? good. That's what you're going so if you want to do this next week, we, and we hope that you do, and if you want to tell some friends about this and get them to do it too, please do. You just got to register so we know how much food we need to buy or Correct. how much food Julie needs to buy. Yep. And so that's why we're asking you to register by noon on Friday. So that gives Julie enough time to prepare. And so you can just go to our website and go to the drop down menu and register that way. Or through our church center app, you can conveniently register for next week. Yep. What's on the menu for next week? Why? It's shepherd pie. You caught me off guard. And I think oh, uh, roasted carrots, I think, is what's next. But shepherd pie is really good. So really good. It'll be fun. Really good. Um, Julie, where should everybody go if they gonna if they want to have some conversation Oh, yeah. Over go dinner? to the website under Discovery, and that'll take you to the Wednesday Night Live uh, link. So you can get the Table Talk questions for your evening. Awesome. So hopefully your table is set at this point. Maybe you're pulling the food out of the oven. Maybe you're like done eating at this point. Who knows? But why don't we just stop what we're doing and everybody together, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer as a prayer of blessing before the meal or maybe a prayer of thanksgiving for after the meal. Let's, uh, let's pray. 
Heavenly and gracious God, we uh, give you thanks for joy and for laughter. And most importantly, God, we give you thanks for pudding pies. Yeah. Because they taste so good. But also, God, we give you thanks for this time that we share together and the reminder that we have the opportunity to choose life because you paid the penalty for our sin and we can embrace new life each and every day through welcoming you into our hearts. And so as we enjoy this meal together, God, we ask that you bless this food. You bless each of us as individuals. You bless these families and you bless our community that we might be those who embody choosing life every day. For we pray this in your holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we hope you all enjoy your food. Yep. And you have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Good night. See you today. How could I feel when the Lord is on my side? My worry can't die too.